force in the market because the established players should, in theory, win business from, from you. You're still starting up and you can't offer uh, what they offer. It takes a while to build a business and offer the services and products that any, any player in the space does. But disruptors come in, and these are typically startups. They come in with a, either a lower price point or better offering or something better thought through, whatever it is. You need to disrupt your market to actually win business effectively. Um, otherwise, yeah, obviously, you can use things like experience or longevity in an industry to get business. You know, if I started a, another search engine marketing company tomorrow, Jonathan, don't worry, I'm <laughs> Um, you know, I'd probably get a lot of business here because I've been in the industry, people know me, I win business, I wouldn't have to differentiate too much with price or anything else. But if I'm going into a new industry, and typically the startup guys jump into new industries, uh, you've got to offer something unique and something value added that's different. And that's that's partially around disrupt, disrupting the market the way it is right now. So when we looked at the market, we realized that site builders were you know, slow and complicated, download, install, virus prone, buy them, shells in the stores. It's very, you know, it wasn't a very pleasant experience. We built a very fast site builder. We've got like 40 servers. Um, yeah, it's easy to use, drag and drop interface. Um, and we just took the approach that it had to be faster than anything else out there and more efficient as a product. So yeah, we still have our problems in South Africa, obviously, with the bandwidth. It's not as fast. You guys might not experience it as fast as we do in the US. And that's obviously you know, in most sites out here. Uh, but, you know, the goal is to make the fastest, most efficient site building product out there. Um, if, you know, if you look at uh, the market, you know, we say market now, it's the people using front page, you go to buy a domain on GoDaddy, configure the settings, point it to a server, get yourself uh, front page extensions and sold on the server. There's a huge process in place of getting a website. Uh, you know, and any amateur designer or developer just using a basic software package to get it online. With us, it's a sign up, drag and drop your content, write your text, hit publish, Choose a subdomain or buy domain, within seconds you're live on the web. Everything's pre-configured, so we make it really easy. And we charge double the margins that GoDaddy charges. It's sort of like when Starbucks launched Starbucks Coffee. They charged $3.50 for a coffee where no one had ever in the US started charging more than 99 cents. There was, you know, coffee's a buck in the morning and that's it. Um, we can charge, I think our margins are six times their margins, purely because, um, sorry. <coughs> Because people are paying for convenience. You, know, you can still, and we still allow people to go buy from GoDaddy. We still can you buy them wherever you want. You pay your ten dollars or eleven dollars, whatever it is, and you can point it to our service. But the, the, the hassle and inconvenience of that, uh, it's not worth the customer's while for an extra eighty nine bucks. Some do, but that's fine. Um, the market here, you pay for premium support. If you want your support tickets to get answered, you know, there's a lot of our competitors still charge for that. We we reckon well, if people need support, that's probably because something's wrong with our product. Probably because it's not as easy to use, or um, and, and, and we should be learning from that. So we've got seven support people, 24/7, running support tickets and, and feeding that information back into the engineering teams, so we can make the product easy to use, so we can figure out what's going, what's going on, and what's going wrong. Um, so you know, if you look at this, a lot of companies they build their whole business model around charging for support, and it's disruptive force. We're just saying it's all free. Um, product features. We don't charge for product features. There's, you know, we're going to start charging for certain things, and some of it is security risks. I mean, uh, one thing we don't allow right now is HTML upload because when we did allow it for free, um, phishing sites started uploading these HTML pages that looked like eBay, and then you'd sign up and they capture your information. So we shut that off because we couldn't control it. And now we've got a workaround where we actually charge a certain fee, and that goes towards covering costs of dealing with that, etc., etc. And, uh, and knowing that we have credit card details with verified addresses makes it easier. So we only charge for things that we really have to, and it makes sense to charge, but otherwise, we don't want to disrupt, we don't want people to feel that they're getting an inferior product um, and having to use something which is a, a, a lower grade than someone else uses. So the, the model of freemium on the web is that things are free and you pay for additional services. We still believe product features should be free, but we'll make money out of templates, for example. So a template, you know, how could we sell you a template but then we limit what you can do with that template by making certain things unavailable in the site builder tool? It's a very, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult line to, to cross. So we've got to think very deeply about what we charge and what we don't. But in every case, we've gone for disrupting the market and just pissing off our competitors. Because they, you know, first of all, we've raised more funding than any of them. And, uh, and, and now we're attacking some of the core business uh, features and, and services and we're making it free. So now they're losing margin, they're losing customers, and you know, we're signing up over 200,000 a month. 
Um, it's a problem for them. Um, hosting is free, unlimited hosting. We, we, we basically have a rate limit just to check that the site's not streaming video or something funny, but that's about it. Um, it's pretty much free hosting. And the explanation I give is 10 years ago, you'd buy a hard drive for $200, you'd buy a 100 megabyte hard drive or 200 megabyte hard drive, which could probably host 200 sites. And you've got to, you know, the cost of that hard drive versus uh, the number of sites on there was, you know, call it $2 a site, you have to make it back, you have to have a, a margin. Right now, $200 will buy you a one terabyte site, uh, hard drive, and that's like 10,000 sites. You divide the two, it's like 0.1 cent each. There's no cost. So why are you charging? So we just made the hosting free as well. And that goes the same with bandwidth. Bandwidth's become so cheap in the US that I mean, my, my 16, 16, giga, 16 megabit line at home has a 250 gigabyte cap, and that's 500 a month. Okay, so it's four times faster than anything you guys have got here, and it's uh, 500 a month. So uh, it's actually just insane. Um, <coughs> so, you know, a lot of the guys get free use of the site all the trial periods. I mean, you know, we just throw it out and say, you know, it's unlimited free use forever, go well. Um, and then, you know, you ask why. Why is the market like that right now? Why are these hosting companies and software site builder products out there doing this? It's because they built their models 10 years ago. They built it in a time when bandwidth was expensive, hosting was expensive, storage costs were high. That's disappeared. and. Their business models haven't adapted, so GeoCity shut down recently. Not because things got cheaper, but because people stopped advertising on those web pages and they just couldn't make money because advertisers got smart and realized these GeoCity web pages are just junk. And people put them up there, they're running ads, they don't make you money, they weren't making enough money to sustain their business, so they shut it down. Um, they didn't innovate, they just bought GeoCities and they just they'd stagnated for 10 years. Um, and, yeah, and so it seems it's getting smarter, so a new model was needed, and we think we've, we've, we hit the mark and we're very close to it. So this is some examples of sites. These guys are a small construction company. Uh, I think it's in Madison County in the US. Um, Twilight fan site. Um, and these are the types of sites that we expect people to build and make it easier. And obviously with better templates, you'll start getting themed templates. And, and we think the template marketplace, the design marketplace, one of our key revenue drivers going forward, because um, if you're the, if you're a designer, anyone yet is a web designer? Okay, if you guys are designing sites and you you trying to sell that template, where would you rather sell it? Would you build it on on the WordPress platform with four million users or whatever it is, or would you build it for a platform that's got 20 million possible buyers? It just it doesn't make sense anymore. So we believe it's a critical mass game. So it's, it's a bit of a Gold rush, yeah. get as many users as possible, get bulk it up, make sure there's enough uh, users to attract the designers to that platform. And then, you know, in terms of revenue per hour of your time, if, you, if you're launching these templates on the more obscure platforms, the more geeky, techy platforms, you're just not going to sell them. First of all, those people are probably design themselves and the book themselves. And secondly, the, 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 the straight number of possible buyers is just reduced greatly. So for us, it's about getting a critical mass of users up. So our successes in the past year, just to discuss them, um, and it's a, I would say past year, year and a bit, you know, 15 months, 18 months, we raised our funding in, in November 2007, so that's called 18 months ago. Um, you know, up to then, we had built the technology at Incubator. We um, funded it ourselves, and I spun out a separate company with some capital limited, and then I funded it myself, literally selling shares in other companies to fund, uh, to fund the citizen. Time. And it was a big risk. I, mean, I put a lot of money into it, but I literally bet my entire, uh, you know, my entire career on it, saying this is going to work. And you know, all the money I built the past couple of years, it's going to this project, and if it doesn't pay off, well, you know, good job waiting for me at Google. <laughs> I'm not joking. 